And Tim, thank you for being here. I believe that your first appearance on CNBC was the Monday following the Silicon yeah. Valley Bank demise. So uh, it's good to have you back one year later. I'm curious, kind of, as we look back and as we reflect, has anything changed in the year since then that would prevent uh, another sizable bank failure like we saw uh, several take place last spring? Yeah, uh, Leslie, hello. Thanks for having me today. And uh, thank you for reminding me that that was my first time on television. I'm happier to be here today than I was at that point in time, I think. <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, given that we're a year removed, it's probably time to put a stake in the heart of the term regional banking crisis. Because if you look at what we've learned over the course of the past year, it's really the same lesson that we learn about every 10 or 15 years, which is uh, not that we had a regional bank problem, but rather we have a crisis of concentrated business models. That was true in the late 70s, early 80s, when you had the energy bust and, you know, Penn Square uh, and Continental Illinois. It was true in the late 80s and early 90s when you had issues with uh, concentrated interest rate risk uh, and real estate in the S&L crisis. It was true in 2007, 2008, when you had concentrations in subprime mortgage. And this time around, it was concentrated funding models. Uh, and potentially, I guess, uh, concentrations in commercial real estate uh, that were the issue. So banks like ours that run a simple, diversified business model and that are deliberate about making sure that we're funded with granular deposits uh, and, uh, you know, well-diversified loan portfolios are able to weather these sorts of periods of uncertainty and market distress in ways that people with more concentrated business models just can't. Um and you say this, of course, against the backdrop of significant volatility in, in names like New York Community Bank Corp, which has seen uh, its share shave its shares really shave off about 70 percent of their value so far this year, partly related to that uh, commercial real estate exposure, as you mentioned. Um, you know, you said that you basically don't see a regional bank crisis uh, currently, uh, but given some of the share price volatility, do you think that? we could see a, a bank fail this year or that's sizable like we saw last year? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't think that there are any large banks that are at any risk of failure. And I think actually when you look at the large banks, uh, most of us are up year to date. I know we are uh, as a, you know, a particular example. I think what you do have in some pockets is you have community banks with very significant concentrations in commercial real estate. And where you have, uh, in the case of New York community, a large concentration in a single city and a single property type, and then a change in the rules uh, in 2019, you have an exposure that becomes difficult uh, to, to navigate. But I think, in general, the banking system is very sound. Uh, the funding bases of the companies that made it through last spring are tested. Uh, for an environment where there was heightened volatility. And I think thanks in particular to the CECL reserving methodology, we're well reserved for a wide range of scenarios that could come, uh, come our way. Uh, Tim, thanks for being with us on Overtime. Uh, your last 10K, I believe, showed a slight increase in non-pass rated loans, more borrowers not in default, but having some trouble paying back what they owe, I mean, something seen across the banking industry lately. How does this higher rate environment, this economy factor into that? At what point does it become any level of concern? Yeah, I mean, great question. I, uh, I, so I'm a big believer that we always need to worry about credit. It's one of the critical risks that we have to manage. But what we're seeing across the industry, and certainly what we're seeing in our particular case, is just a gradual normalization of credit. Our uh, NPAs uh, and our charge-offs last year were still well below historical averages. Uh, they just are continuing to normalize back to the level that they would have been at in the period immediately preceding the uh, COVID pandemic. Um, I think higher rates will weigh on businesses. They weigh on borrowing activity. Uh, I was looking at a survey that the CFO Alliance put out uh, not long ago where they surveyed CFOs of middle market companies across the country, and almost 40 percent of them indicated they're going to be undertaking an expense program this year in part to offset uh, the increase in debt service costs. Uh, and to make sure that they maintain strong profitability and strong margins. So it is weighing on uh, businesses. They just are finding ways, uh, at least to this point, to be able to offset those increased borrowing costs. And the larger companies, of course, who had access to the capital markets had the opportunity to lock in historically low fixed rates. And the byproduct of that is they bought themselves a lot of time 
uh, for uh, rates to recede back to more normalized levels.